do if a team of talented modders came together to bring classic Super Mario characters to Friday Night Funkin'? Well, I've got just the mod for you. Here's 10 things about Super Mario Bros. Funk Mix Deluxe. Alright, before we get into it, if you guys like these type of videos and want to see more, be sure to hit that sub button and be the first to see them. We're just a couple subs away from 200k, and I want you to see what we got in store for that milestone. Alright, let's get into it. Super Mario Bros. Funk Mix is a Funkin' mod that takes place in the classic NES and Game Boy era of Super Mario, following the storyline of these titles, only it's boyfriend traveling through different levels to find girlfriend. Funk Mix uses both a limited color palette and a fixed aspect ratio to emulate the feeling of a classic CRT TV or Game Boy screen. As many of the opponents and worlds in this mod originate from those systems. Although this mod has two worlds as opposed to Mario's typical eight, it still bolsters an impressive amount of content, both within and outside the main story. The stages in story mode loosely follow the levels of Mario NES, though levels 1, 3, and 2, 1 are skipped for pacing reasons, and the final stage takes place on Bowser's airship, which wasn't introduced until Mario 3. From there, the player can now try out some of these bonus songs. Foreman Spike originates from the NES game Wrecking Crew, one of the first games to feature Mario and Luigi. Spike acts as an antagonistic force in this game, purposefully hindering Mario and Luigi while they attempt to break walls by either pushing them or destroying the walls himself. Spike's song Destruction Dance is a remix of a song of the same name from DDR Mario Mix, the game whose title inspired the name Super Mario Bros. Funk Mix. Halfway through Destruction Dance, Foreman Spike is blown up and falls off their platform, before being promptly replaced by the one and only Waluigi. Waluigi is unique in that there are no official NES sprites of the character, due to them being first introduced alongside Wario in Mario Tennis for the N64, long after the NES was discontinued. Foreman Spike acted as a sort of prototype to Wario and Waluigi, and because of this, a few references to Spike have been attributed to Waluigi over the years. One of the Mario Tennis 64 skins for Waluigi resembles Spike. Waluigi is given the gold mantis cart in Mario Kart DS, which resembles the Foreman's Excavator, and Waluigi dances over Destruction Dance in DDR Mario Mix, which is a remix of the Wrecking Crew theme. These references are likely the reason Waluigi was chosen to replace Spike mid-song, similar to how Waluigi replaced Spike's role in the Mario franchise. The two songs Portal Power and Bullet Time are both based on classic Flash games. Portal Power comes from the 2012 game Mari Zero, where Mario is given a portal gun from the Valve series Portal to traverse their classic NES release. The game comes with four-player co-op and stage packs, as well as the entirety of Mario 1. Though Mario still looks like himself only with a portal gun in this game, Mario Funk Mix changed his design to suit more closely to an Aperture test subject like in the Portal games. The stage also seems to be a testing room within Aperture Science, and the song even opens with a short music loop from the radio's found throughout the game. Bullet Time is based on the Flash game by Psychosis91 called Bullet Bill and their subsequent sequels. The Bullet Bill series is a level-based action game where the Mario enemy flies through many of the world's levels to wreak destruction and hopefully not crash. The song in this stage is a recomposition of Bullet Bill 3's boss music and adheres to the game's musical theme of drum and bass remixes of well-known Mario tracks. Boo Blitz is the only song in the mod where the player directly controls Boyfriend. Between turns, Boyfriend must pace themselves in safe spots between bursting flames in order to prevent damage. This mechanic was inspired by the versus tricky expurgation concept created by SGI Obama that had Boyfriend physically dodging Tricky's attacks mid-song. Giant Boo covers their face during Boyfriend's turn because when Mario is facing a Boo in any of their games, they hide and stop moving. Mario and Sonic crossover in the song Cross Console Clash. The description of the song reads, two bitter rivals meet once again for an all-out musical brawl. Now it's time to decide the true winner of the console wars. For those of you who don't know, the mid-90s was a battleground for home console owners. Owners. Right off the heels of the 83 video game market crash, Nintendo began reigniting public interest in video games with the Nintendo Entertainment System. Nintendo was a powerhouse of the home entertainment market, but began to see some competition in the free market from Sega, who also had some home consoles in circulation. For a few years, the Sega Genesis actually outperformed Nintendo's home consoles, but ultimately Nintendo won the console war due to more international appeal than Sega, and the recent release of the Sony PlayStation, sparking a war of its own. Though the wars happened between Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis era, the cross crossover between NES Mario and Genesis Sonic was likely made to show the contrast between the two art styles, one being 8-bit and the other 16. Representing Super Mario Maker, we have the hidden character of Weird Mario. Unlocking Weird Mario requires the player to knock on the door in the free play menu, referencing the same thing in Super Mario Maker. Weird Mario is the result of Mario eating a weird mushroom and becoming all tall and lanky, receiving the 
same high jump as his brother Luigi. Weird Mario's stage seems to be a mishmash of blocks and enemies, akin to a sloppy Mario Maker level. The description of first level smiley face reads, Hi guys, this took a lot of time, but I finally finished my first level. I worked very hard on it, so please give it a star if you liked it. K thanks. Implying this level was created by a child. The car and Piranha Plant jump in beat to the vocal cue, just like in New Super Mario Bros, which is another style of Mario Maker level. The car was a tie-in with Mercedes that allowed players to access the Mercedes Benz skin for Mario in classic mode. Yes, that is real, and it is also in Mario Kart. Another secret is Wrong Warp, which requires the player to mash down on any of the pipes in the settings menu to corrupt Mario. The player is then taken to a stage which is a hodgepodge of colors and textures akin to a vine sauce corruption. This is likely a reference to cartridge tilting, which would require someone to move a game cartridge while the game is running. This often results in audio and visual corruptions due to the incorrect reading of information that can often lead to corrupt saves. This is why modern games have forms of pre-caching and backloading to prevent this sort of corruption. For example, Animal Crossing for the GameCube can be loaded and then played with the disk removed because all of the game's data is loaded onto the system. Inputting the Konami code, up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA, into the main menu of Funk Mix brings us to our final opponent of the mod. Game Boy Cameraman is an unsettling looking 3D rendered figure appearing on a green Game Boy screen. This character originates from the original Game Boy Camera Peripheral, an attachment that allows users to take pictures and play games with the handheld console. The Game Boy Camera could also be paired with the Game Boy Printer, allowing users to print their creations on receipt paper. One of the Easter eggs in this game is an RPG, and one of the options is Run. This usually brings the player back to the main menu, but occasionally when selecting this option, the player will receive an image of a scary face with either the caption, What are you running from? or Don't be silly. These faces are actually just developers who worked on the Game Boy camera and messed around with their self-portraits. But this didn't hinder the fact that these out-of-place faces are incredibly unsettling. Since then, there have been a number of creepypastas written involving the faces, and the inclusion of this character in Funk Mix is a nod to that. But this isn't the only creepypasta character in Funk Mix. Funk Mix Game Over is a completely different mod and official expansion of the original work. The mod starts MX, a Mario take on Sonic.exe made by Taco Games called Mario 85, and essentially follows the plot of the original game. The game banana description reads, something's wrong with your copy of Mario Bros. Funk and Mix. Looks like MX found a new victim, implying this happens after MX kills Lucas in Mario 85, as his head is seen briefly in this mod's only song. From the get-go, booting up this mod is eerie. There's no music other than the settings, and everything is color scaled down, giving this strange, dark presence to the previously upbeat title. This is likely why Game Over was separate from the OG Funk Mix, as in the original story, the main character Lucas receives a corrupt copy of Super Mario Bros. from their uncle Mark. Boyfriend is also chased through the Mario overworld by MX just like Lucas, but manages to escape through a warp pipe. And that's 10 things about Mario Funk Mix I hope you enjoyed. I first saw this mod on Twitter forever ago, and I was blown away by how creative they made the pixel stages, and I just knew eventually I had to make a 10 things about it. Alright, thanks for watching. Until next time.